But welcome back to our channel. And yes, your eyes do not deceive you. That is Saguaro, our bus behind us. So to catch everyone up to speed that doesn't know, we built and traveled in this bus right here for a year. And after the year, we decided to downsize for various reasons. We have a video out on that of why we made the decision if you are interested. And uh, we've moved into the van itself. That being said, the bus has kind of just been sitting here and we have not sold it yet. I know that's probably everyone's number one question. And that's the answer, we've not sold it yet. But we're here to put some more work into it. I think she's ready for her next adventure, you know? She doesn't belong here, she belongs on the road. A big reason why we came back to Salt Lake City is to check on the bus, make sure that everything's still working well. We have had tons of people contact us who are interested in the bus. We made a separate folder for bus-related emails in our email account, and I don't wanna show anyone's personal info, but just like, it's so many people have asked us about the schoolie and who are interested in it. But the biggest problem and the reason it has not been sold yet is people are having trouble getting a loan. We've got so many people give us an offer, we'll accept the offer, and then they go to their bank to get the loan. Even people who have been pre-approved and then they just, they aren't able to get the loan. We just wanna make sure that we're doing everything on our end to try and match this bus with its next owner. So while Natalie's making the bus all tidy, there are a few things I need to get done in the back of the van. We've been here for a couple days, so I've been able to make a little bit of progress, but behind me are where our bikes will be stored. You can kind of get a little sneak peek. We've got one bike back there right now. And our original plan for the bikes was to put them on slides so we can pull them all the way out. But we eventually opted against that just to save a little bit of room. And since we're saving that room, we can now fit shelves above the bikes. First, obviously, you can kind of tell it's kind of a mess back there, so I do need to get that cleaned up. All right, Natalie, I'm gonna need you for this transition. Uh-oh, okay. Come here. All right. All right. Now stand right here. Uh-huh. All right. Okay. All right, now go like this. Ready? Yeah. And ta-da! <gasps> Whoa, it's clean! How'd I do it? How did you do that? <laughs> All right, now you can get back to the bus. Oh, you sure? Good luck. <laughs> Thanks, you too. So this is the space that I'm working with. I've got two equidistance cubbies, and my plan is, is to put a shelf about two feet up, just enough so the bike can slide under it, but we still get a little bit of storage. We do have a third cubby, but that's mainly used for plumbing. But this is one of the rooms that we never actually showed you while we were working on the van. This is the finishing room. They do their best to block off this room from the wood shop next door, so that the sawdust and dirt doesn't get in the finishings, like the paint and the poly in this room. We rarely used it because it was so hot during the summer, we could just dry everything outside, but it's like sub 30. So anything with paint, I do in here now. Everything at this makerspace is pretty heavily project-based, which means you can leave projects like this in the workshop if you fill out a parking permit. You fill out a green one and it gives you seven days to park your project in that area and after seven days you get a yellow warning and then after another week or two it's pretty much up for grabs and anyone can take it or trash it. We haven't gotten that far but we are pretty careful about it. That is really not too bad. I feel like we just saved. I mean, that's about a foot of space we just saved. That is awesome. And the bike just, it's fit in there so snug. It's not going anywhere. And the way it's set up right now is that we've got about a foot of space on the top and we still have a little bit of space we can access from inside the van through the uh, hamper door as we call it, which uh, we'll probably put our hamper there. We've been debating on what we should put on the top shelf and I think we've landed on that will be our new shoe storage. Right now, they're kind of just all over the place and it really clutters up our garage, but I think this will really help. So in getting this bus detailed, the three main things I've been doing are dusting, cleaning, and painting. And then of course, on top of that, we're kind of checking all the systems to make sure everything's running properly. But really, it's only been a few months since we were living in this full time. So all the systems seem to be in good shape. So all the water system still works great. 
the heater still works, which is the one I was most nervous about, and then of course the bus, which is the most important one. Uh, after almost two months of us being gone, where it just sat here and wasn't moved, it started right up on the first try. One of the most recent repairs we had done on the bus was replacing the glow plugs, and that has just made a massive difference in how this bus handles cold weather. So everything with the bus is working great, I just wanna make sure that it looks as good as it actually is. So as far as getting everything dusted off goes, by far the biggest pain in my butt has been these Max Air fans, they got so dirty. I don't think we really cleaned them in the whole year we were living in here, but I just took them all apart, doused it in water, scrubbed it down, and they look brand new. I kind of wish I'd done that for us while we were living in here, but better late than never. So for cleaning, I started with the shower, and I cleaned the nature's head composting toilet that we've been using. It would obviously be ideal to replace the toilet for a new owner, but those toilets are $1,000. So I just kind of took a day, drenched it in bleach, so that thing is beyond clean. And uh, also pro tip, there is a removable jug on the front of the toilet, and we don't really have to talk about what goes into that jug, but you can buy a replacement one for like $30. So for us, that was worth the investment to just go ahead and buy a new one. We also haven't been using the fridge since we're not living in here, so I also cleaned out the inside of that as well. And the last big category of things I've been doing in here is painting. So I refinished the whole shower floor so it looks brand new, and I went and repainted the inside of all of our overhead cabinets. That was really no big deal, but it just makes it look a lot nicer and brighter in there. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> now I gotta put it up. Oh, true? I'm actually like excited about it. Alright, that was pretty fast. That might have been under 10 seconds. It's gotta be. That was so fast. That's very good. That's awesome. Just putting it out there, if anybody's interested in getting their own electric e-bike, we have the XP lights and we love them because they're super lightweight. We have a link in our description if you're interested. They're not sponsoring this video, but we do really like their bikes. Well, we are pretty much done for the day and I think Jimmy is actually finished everything we need to do on the van. So I think what that means is that we don't have to come back to the makerspace tomorrow. But of course that is with the caveat that, is that how you pronounce that? Caveat? Caveat? Caviar. That is of course with the caveat that we need to return everything we were going to return. And then we can pretty much take the day off tomorrow, if that makes sense. I'm so excited to not make so many Lowe's runs in the near future. We may have just narrowly avoided our first knock. Ah, oh, my heart's racing, even though <laughs> nothing happened. Not to us. <laughs> I was coming back in from Cracker Barrel, and on my way back in, I see two police cars pulled up with their lights on talking to the van that was parked right next to us. And they camped overnight at the Cracker Barrel just like we had done. And um, this is not the first time we stayed at this Cracker Barrel, so I know that they allow it, but they might be changing their rules on that, so. Um, yeah, I don't know if they're clearing everyone out because it's the new week or what. Maybe it totally has nothing to do with the camping and they're dealing with something different, but we saw the police talking to the van right next to us and we would have been their next stop if they were clearing people out, so. Yeah. We, we just packed everything up immediately, like locked the drawers and just peeled out. <laughs> <laughs> We've been doing uh, this free campsite nomadic lifestyle for about a year and a half and we have not had a knock yet and I want to keep it that way, Yes. so we left. Uh, we are trying to figure out what we're going to do for today. We have a couple leads, but we just kind of pulled over once we got out of that parking lot to um, kind of take a breather and figure out what we're going to do. So I think we've decided that we're gonna go check out Antelope Island. 
which is about an hour north of Salt Lake City. Pretty much everyone we've talked to here, whenever we would mention that we're not from the area, they would tell us that we need to go check out Antelope Island. We're really excited to see what all the hype is about. Hey, how are you? All right, two seconds in and we're already lost. Nah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> There's a bison over there though. They're pretty cool. They're pretty far away. <laughs> they uh, make it pretty clear on the map that you're not supposed to approach them. So I'm hoping we can see some closer to the actual road. That's the plan. Yeah, the map that they gave us when we pulled into the state park says that bison can run up to 40 miles per hour. And when I Googled it, someone said that they can maintain that speed for up to an hour, which is terrifying. And it's only a little bit faster than my top speed. Neither of us have ever seen bison before, so this is really cool seeing so many of them from the comfort of our van. They look really huge in person. Oh, there's one over there. I know. <laughs> He's in the middle of the campground ring. Oh my gosh. Can you imagine camping here and you wake up one day and you just see that giant animal right outside your RV? That's your neighbor. There's a whole herd of them up over here, like right off the side of the road. That is so cool. I'm very excited to see them. You know, also a little scared of them, so I don't want to like talk too loud. Yeah, this one's got his tail up, and on the map it says uh, if they've got their tail up, then uh, they're angry. But uh, <laughs> this guy's just eating. I think he's fine. But I don't know. It matches the picture pretty, uh, pretty oh, really? clearly. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't want to aggravate them, so I think we should probably drive away. Right, bye bye. So bison look really docile, but like most animals, if they feel threatened, they can get pretty dangerous. And you can really see why when you get close to them, because they have these big horns. And one thing I think is interesting is unlike elk or deer, bison will actually fight back if they're being attacked. It's definitely the most majestic animals I've ever seen. that one's doing where he's shaking his head on the concrete. Scratching, I guess? He's just a little itchy. <laughs> so we just stopped by the bison corral and uh, you're supposed to be quiet, I assume, so you don't disturb the animals. And there's also people working here, so we don't want to be annoying by like vlogging <laughs> where all these bison are being held. They looked a little stressed out already. Yeah, we talked to one of the um park rangers, I guess you'd call them. This park can only hold about six to 700 uh, bison. And that's just what the island can support. And so every year, since there's no natural predators, 150 calves are born, which means they have to get rid of about 150 bison per year to keep that number down. So we talked to the ranger and he said that the auctions were held like a week ago. And so uh, we saw a couple of bison still in the pens and I think the owners just haven't come to pick them up yet. Doing just a little bit of research, the auctions are usually for um, sometimes other national park herds, or, but mainly private farms where they would be used for breeding or the slaughterhouse. So Antelope Island is the largest of 10 islands in the Great Salt Lake and it's actually surprisingly big. Although with the water levels as low as it is right now, I think it's technically not an island. It's more of a peninsula right now, but it's still called Antelope Island. We picked out a little hike around here, but we're gonna try and get a good view at Buffalo Point. As the sun's starting to go down, we hear howling in the distance. There are coyotes on this island, so we're thinking that's gotta be what it is. You gotta howl, Matt. Ow! They must be thinking you're an injured a wolf. Yeah, All right, 
I feel like that at this point, the coyotes know we're here and they're just waiting for it to be nighttime so they can come attack. So we should probably make it back to the car. <laughs> now there's a bison right behind us. I'm not joking. Let's go around. Let's uh, like go to the right over here or something. Okay. Oh my gosh, I like came up over a rock and he was just staring at me. I don't think he was angry, but it's so cold out, he had steam coming out of his nose. So there he is, and that's the trail we need to be on. That's terrifying. You're supposed to keep like a minimum of 25 yards distance between you and a bison. Well, even though the trail's over there, we're gonna go around this way and see if we can't meet up with it. And just stay away from that area entirely. I see him. Alright, we should probably keep going. I really wish we were in the van right now. He's starting to look at us. He's walking towards us a little bit. He's still looking at us. He's moved closer a little bit, but I think that's because he's kind of grazing and he's moving closer but he definitely knows we're here i think we're in the clear now but i mean if they can run 40 miles per hour i don't think we're in the clear until we're in the van yeah yeah that uh that got me warm that got my blood up <laughs> <laughs> overall i'm very glad we decided to come to the antelope island it's funny how quickly we went from being nervous about coyotes to being nervous about the bison 10 feet from us uh. Yeah, I would way rather come face to face with a coyote than a bison. <laughs> we were talking about as we were trying to find the coyotes, like, I think I could take one coyote by itself. <laughs> I think we could do it. <laughs> but a bison, oh, we ran so fast. <laughs> yeah. You're not even supposed to run, but I was like fighting the survival instinct and power walking. <laughs> yeah, we were power walking, no running. <laughs> I feel like in all those situations, all of the tips you've ever heard in your mind go through your head at once where you're like do i run do i walk do i play dead do i fight it do i yell do i be quiet and you just have no idea well we're obviously ending our time here at the antelope canyon i think we'll probably pick you back up tomorrow we should probably go back to the makerspace and there's a couple more things we gotta deal with with the bus and uh we'll just pick you up then good morning we're about to take our bus on a little joy ride and it might be the last one for a while Are you ready? Ready. Man, I honestly forgot how fun it is to drive this thing. It's like a big toy. Obviously, since it's an older diesel engine, it is a bit noisy, but we got the shocks replaced a couple months ago and this thing drives so smoothly. Doing the bus driver, yeah, doing the bus driver. <laughs> and passenger off. <laughs> I still can't believe that we built this thing. <laughs> it is pretty unreal. Yeah. All right. Those first couple seconds after we turn off the bus is just so quiet. <laughs> Are you gonna miss it? I will. I Yeah, I'm really sad to leave it, honestly, but I feel like it's the right call. I feel like the bus definitely has advantages over the van. The size, like the inside is so much bigger. It's got a 12 inch mattress instead of a six inch mattress. <laughs> 40 inch TV. Why? We're, it sounds like we're trying to sell the bus. I know, we are trying it's, to. <laughs> it's almost like we're trying to sell it. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, Suara. Bye. All right, well, I think this is where we're gonna wrap it up for today. This might be one of the last times we actually see our bus Saguaro. Obviously, we've not sold it yet, but we're well on our way. Um, so the next time we be back here, we should 
have the bus sold. But we said this before, but we promise we'll let you know when we sell the bus. We'll do a whole celebratory thing. We'll post on the community tab about it. We might even do a live stream. Yeah. So if it that's motivation for someone out there to buy the bus so we have another live stream, I mean, all the better for us. Yeah, either way. Either way. <laughs> but we're going to end it here. Thanks so much for hanging out with us, and we will see you next week. Bye. Bye. It's almost a full 360. I know, that's pretty good. Oh. <laughs> so it's probably going to be a little colder than the ideal temperature but i think that there's also supposed to be a lot of bugs in the wow that is so boring i'm not gonna include that hey little buddy little you want to be friends <laughs> this one's like a statue is it actually a statue i don't think it's a statue <laughs>